One thing that I learned during that was someone said, you know, I want to do really good in medical school because I want to be in AOA. And I was like, what's AOA? I've never heard of AOA. And they're like, oh, that's like the honors society in medical school where you're the top grades um, and, and top scores and all that stuff. And you get to be in AOA. And I said, oh, that's nice. I'll never be AOA. I'm just going to be happy if I do well. And, you know, in my head, I thought if I just pass and graduate from medical school. So, you know, I went through the program, I gave it my all, um, and then medical school started. And I remember, you know, my white coat ceremony, uh, and my family was there, and my son was there, and my husband was there, and it was just, uh, it was a very inspiring ceremony and something that I just never, I always wanted, but I didn't know I could get there. And, um, after white coat ceremony, I started medical school and I studied so, so hard. I remember thinking, if I'm not going to be with my son and my husband, who were still back home while my husband, you know, took like 18 hours of classes to finish college to come move with me, then I needed to be studying. So I woke up early. I would go to, to the school. I'd study. And then I come home and eat and then I go back to the school and I study. And I almost feel like during that first semester, I overstudied, but I just felt like this is what I need to be doing because if we're sacrificing um, our time together and sacrificing all these things, then I need to be studying. So I studied and I did really well uh, in med school in the first semester. Um, so well that I surprised myself. I didn't know that I could do so well. Uh, and then my husband and my son moved to Galveston with me um, in December. So that made a big difference. It just it really changed uh, my morale. I was much happier to be with him because during that first six months, I only got to see my husband twice, I believe. And my husband graduated from college and I didn't get to go to his graduation because I had a test the next week and I was too afraid to, to leave and not study and to, to go there. I watched his graduation online. They had it recorded, but I didn't get to be there with him. Um, but it was just something we had to do. Uh, and then I saw my son a little bit more because my parents would bring him up to see me, but I still didn't see him as much as a mother should. I would read him uh, stories uh, or tell him stories when he was going to bed through the phone every night. Uh, but it just wasn't the same as being there with your child. So when they came, I feel like it really changed um, all that part. There wasn't the sadness of not having them with me. And then I was able to focus on school in a different way. And so, um, you know, I focused on school, but I still didn't miss his events. Um, in medical school, you are, you know, you're able to decide what classes you're going to go to if you're going to get a scribe where that's someone who has the notes done for you, um, and you, you read the notes and study those notes. And so I didn't miss class very much. I was very much a class goer. I thought that was important for me to be in class asking questions. And I think anyone who went to med school with me always knew me as the girl who sat in the front row and always asked questions. Um, but I thought that I'm here to become a great doctor, so I'm going to ask what I need to ask. Uh, and so I was known for that. Um, but I did miss, you know, some classes if my son had a field trip or if there was a really important event at his school. I maybe missed three classes a year, but um, for things that I thought were very, very important. Uh, and then as far as studying in the evenings, I would come home and then I would eat dinner with them and then I would go back and I would study in the evenings. Uh, I would study at my son's baseball games. I would study at his basketball games. I, I just made it work. I did what I had to do to make it work. Uh, and it was actually really funny when my son started a school. He started kindergarten in Galveston. And on the first day of school, he's like, Mom, you don't have to worry about making me dinner tonight. And I said, why? He's like, I'm just going to study at school tonight. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I guess I'm teaching him you know, good things for when he gets older that he'll have that uh, in him that he'll know that he has to study and work really hard when he's in college or if he ever decides to go to medical school. Um, so we always remember that story from him. Uh, but other things that we did, w that I did to be uh, remain involved with him is that I helped coach one of his teams and some of my classmates. They also uh, joined along and did that as volunteer work where they were coaches also in my son's teams with my husband. And that was a great experience. And those are friends that I still have to this day. Um, you know, our, those friends saw my son who was at that time four. They would go to his birthday parties. And now my son is 15 years old and they still come to visit and see him and they've seen him grow. So that's been a great experience. Um, 
And so the other things I did in medical school to make sure that I was, you know, on top and that I was doing the best that I could do was I did do summer research programs that they had at the medical school. Um, I also uh, did extra courses in the summer, like you can decide if you want to do an extra uh, rotation or if you want to take the summer break, and I just did all the rotations. So for me, knowing in my mind that eventually I wanted to have a second child, then I just took as many classes as I could so that if I wanted to have a second child, it wasn't going to put me behind on graduation. Um, and so then we did decide to have a second child. Um, I had my uh, second son uh, in the summer between third and fourth year. And that was also an experience in that I was uh, a third year medical student. And for anyone who's been a third year medical student, especially one who's trying to do a good job, I worked really, really hard, and if a resident needed me, I was there, and I was always the one asking, like, what can I do? What do I need to do next um, to be make sure that I was being helpful and doing a good job and learning? Um, and so in my OB-GYN rotation, I was 32 weeks pregnant, and I was being the superstar med student, <laughs> making sure that I was there when the babies were born, getting labs, doing everything I needed to do, and they were going to do an ultrasound. And I don't know what possessed me to say, oh, do you need help pushing the machine? <laughs> and so I pushed the ultrasound machine, and as I'm pushing the ultrasound machine, I start feeling like I'm having contractions. And I said, is it okay if I go lay down really quick? Which I never would ask to go lay down, but I went and lay down. Um, and I sat in this call room by myself and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I'm having contractions like every six minutes. <laughs> this is not a good thing. So I thought I better, you know, go tell the OB-GYN residents. And I told them and they were like, okay, let's hook you up. And they're like, yeah, you're having contractions like every three minutes. So I was going into preterm labor at 32 weeks. And, uh, that was, as much as I knew, and I know that 32 week babies do okay, it was horrifying and terrifying for me. And um, this was the two days before the final. And so I got put in the hospital, Got um, they gave me medications to stop the labor, and I felt really, really sick. But I got, per and I was then told that I was gonna have to be on bed rest for a whole month, which uh, really threw me off, because uh, I had never had to do anything like that. But luckily I had prepared in advance where I had taken the courses. So anyway, in that summer, what I was gonna be doing is studying for step, I believe it's step two at that point. Um, and so I um, went, got discharged home, <laughs> went the next day, got permission from my doctor to take my final. I took my final. I was very out of it on my final because I had medicine in me that was making me groggy, but I knew I just had to get a certain score to do well enough, and so I just wanted it to be over and done with. So I took that, and then I was on bed rest for a whole month, uh, and I studied for step two, and then I luckily didn't have him till he was term. So he was 39 weeks when he was born. Um, and you know, I had, that was probably a very, very difficult situation for me, but it worked out. And I think through all of it, when you decide to do medicine, you have to know that there are going to be hardships and there are going to be hard times that you just have to push through and you'll get through it. Um, you just have to know that you're doing this for a good cause, that you're becoming a doctor because you want to help others and that everything that you're going through, no matter how hard it is, it's going to be worth it when you um, help that family or help that child and and you will get there. And so, uh, you know, that went well after that. Uh, I actually finished med school early because I had done all of those classes in the summer and all the research. So I finished my last rotation in January of my fourth year, and I got to be a stay-at-home mom from February to June. In between that time, February to June, that is uh, when you decide if you're, that's where you decide where you're going to go to residency. Um, and so I uh, had my match day and we actually matched to Salt Lake City in Utah. Uh, and that was a whole new experience for us also. That was actually my first choice and so a place that I wanted to go. And we wanted to, you know, take that opportunity to get, we're from Texas and we had always been in Texas. So we wanted to take that opportunity to go somewhere else and meet new people. And that was a whole new adventure. And so I started residency with a, let's see, my son was eight. My oldest was eight. My second son was almost a year old when we uh, started residency. And residency uh, is a, it's a very difficult time. That is, I think, uh, one of the most physically exhausting things that I've ever done. Uh, it, there is emotional exhaustion too, but there is physical exhaustion, but it's all. 
Thank you for watching our videos. We have two things that we want you to do. Number one, please leave a comment below or question so that we can try to make videos to address them. Or email us at info at diversemedicine.org. Number two, please subscribe to our channel and that way we can get the videos out to as many people as possible. Thanks for watching.